Why, hello there. It's me, Scott. I got a haircut and a sh shave and a haircut. Um, I think, yeah, it's for the first time streaming. Since I'm still not used to it. When you have a beard for a while and then you shave the beard. Looks pretty weird. I know. Hi, Draculin. I know, it's a little weird. It looks... It's just weird. Like, your beard becomes part of your face. I know. Everyone can... You can see my bare... Ugh. See my bare face? I could censor it. I could censor this. <laughs> Who is this? Who is this boy? Who is this child? Um... It's a, it is a whole new me. Good heavens! What a reception! I didn't I didn't accept I expect uh, so, such shock and awe. Occasionally, it's springtime, and in the springtime, animals shed off all of their excess winter fluff. Do I look like I'm from the MythBusters? Okay, I guess I'll take that. Um, okay, we have to. Here's the thing. I did the first session of Invisible Technology last week, and I kind of punted on it. Kind of. So the, my original pitch of it was like, yeah, we'll do two sessions. One of them will be just sort of talking in theory, and one of them will be practice. So last week was the like, just talk about it. And that went okay, because I can just talk about anything forever. Um, but this week we actually have to actually do stuff. And there's not probably going to be a ton of people. And those people will probably have very light skills in the realm of hardware. So what I'm thinking is, is we'll just have some arts and crafts. And so I want to do some brainstorming and I want to put together a couple of real simple circuits um, that the participants can use to um, kind of play with things in three categories. Those categories being, so last week we talked about all kinds of things. We, we, we did the planning on stream. So you can go look at that. Or if you were here, then you already know. Um, let's find that thing, that important document. Mm -hmm. I guess I'll just keep adding notes to the bottom of this. This is session two. Invisible technology, session two. I know I'm not on the screen. I'm just waiting for life is yours to alert me. Watch this, I'll alert myself. Beat you to it. I win. Um, okay, yeah, here's here's the thing. So we went over all this stuff. We talked about a lot of nonsense. Okay, I did ask for it. That's my fault. That is my fault. Um, okay. You know what I was thinking? Okay, let's get distracted for a minute. Here's what I... I think I can do this. I'm... Wait, why did Draculin not get an alert? Oh, because he's messing with me again, isn't he? Uh... I believe that I can show this thing because I believe I own it now. Because, uh, I was, okay. First, let's see if it works. Um. I don't know if I actually remember how this works. Okay, hold, yeah, we'll just look at this. Anyway, so I did a project for Draculin. Hello, is it Earth to Draculin? Come in, Draculin. I did a project with D. Lopeser last year at the beginning of the year, and it was kind of this this uh, little company that had some funding to do some explorations, but we wanted, we, we kind of came, do some explorations on like interactive type-based stuff, um, especially like a social media type thing, which funnily enough, like every social media platform added shortly after. But they hired us to do some like animation explorations. And then we basically went back and said, well, for the same amount of money, we would we could build some rough prototypes, but we would own the prototypes unless you option to buy them so that we so that we could reuse the tech if we wanted to. And so it was all this 3D type stuff built in 3JS. And these are very rough examples. But um, but it's real-time browser. These are pretty silly. David made this one. Um, I can't even remember how to set the text. 
Okay, you said it like that. So I made all these things that were like, like I did this one. These are all just 3D, 3JS or 3JS filters. And the whole idea was just type. Um, and then I think that, yeah, they all have like some dynamic element to them. And so what I was thinking is I've got all this stuff. This is all for you. All of this is for Drecklin. I made this specifically for Drecklin. Um, I think this one you can click and it gets more distorted. Yeah. So. I have a lot of tech for like real time 3D visual effect y typography. I, I shouldn't have hard coded. Why would I want any text other than Draclin though? It doesn't make what What else would I even want? Um, anyway, what I, I had kind of forgotten about this project until I was fixing some DNS stuff and I was like, oh, that's a URL that has some stuff. So. What I was thinking is, is taking some of this like weird 3D real-time text stuff and making overlays out of it, so that when there's an, you know, when there's follows or alerts or whatever, we can do weird real-time VFXy stuff all in a web browser. That would be kind of part of Bot made this, and also part of Heat maybe, because this could be hooked into Heat, and when you clicked it, weird stuff could happen to the letters. What do you think? What do we think about these ideas? I don't think this one does anything. I don't remember how this works. I think there was some way to pick things explicitly, but no, I don't remember. David made some pretty weird ones, but I think we've seen all of them now. Anyway, that's what I want to do. I want to make some 3D, 3D typey things. Meanwhile, that's not how you spell consumer at all. Um. <clears throat> So I'm going to have a couple things. One, I want to rant slightly about something that came up during the session. Um, let's see, how, how do I want to rant about this? So something came up that was one, one of the participants in the workshop was talking about kind of lamenting that old tech was ob made obsolete so quickly and ended up in the trash. And he was working on projects with uh, some old iPod touches because he could get them for $8 each. And, and he was just kind of going on about like that it's a bummer that that stuff becomes useless so quickly. And somebody else was like, well, if that's the problem, what you, what's the solution you propose? And the more I thought about that, it's like this, uh, it's a very common, and he wasn't out of line. I mean, it was a reasonable question, but it's a, that's a, such a common thing to say, like, if you are the person who identifies a problem, that the burden is on you to find the solution. And one, I think that's kind of bad culturally, actually. And I think that criticism is valuable. And I, the person to identify a problem, there's no reason to think that that's also the person who's best equipped to um, offer a solution to the problem. But particularly in the world of art, I think that's like an unhealthy world worldview i think in art and creativity you can identify problems and shine light on problems and and play with problems and make fun of problems or whatever you want without even considering offering a solution um where the 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 job you are doing is drawing attention to something um and that ties into a few views of art that i think are important and interesting no, yes, I know, right, where the burden of proof is on everybody else, yes. So Jacqueline's saying terrible movement where, yeah, you can decide something and then it's somebody else's job to disprove it. And I mean, that's there's a lot of trolling in that realm too of just pretending to like something just to aggravate people. Um, but I, I, so I, a part of this is like, I'm having, I'm starting to have a problem with compound, like these compound concepts. Um, because, so, for example, another compound concept I don't like is that I see all the time, particularly in American culture, is I like this thing, so I want more of it. Those are two separate ideas, but like contemporary American culture, those are the same idea. It's like if you like something, you just want more of it. You want to subscribe to it. You want to get it every month. You want more episodes. You want more movies in the series, whatever. Like it's almost impossible to just like a thing. And it, this is like, it's not just people. And it's not just like the marketing advertising world or the content creation world, but they're so, it gets so tangled up where, where um, there's no separation of those ideas. And I think that's a bummer because I think you should be able to say like, oh, I like this thing. 
I'm glad I appreciated it. It's good. I don't need any more things. Like, I'm, th th I had this experience. Let's move on. I don't need 20 more episodes or three more movies or 10 more shipments or whatever. Um, so I want to think, I just want to talk briefly to them about that because I think that is a thing that gets easily lost. Um, I just think I want to th think how to phrase it so it's not like too incredibly off topic because I don't want to, I mean, I kind of do just want to rant about it for three hours, but I shouldn't, I should maybe rant about it for like 10 minutes. Um, I'm just going to call it problems and solutions. Oh, how do I want to put this? An hour and a half? That's fair. That's fair. So. purpose of art let's see I like um this is the thing that comes up I feel like people get hung up maybe it's not as common now but I feel like definitely in the later half of the 20th century there's always a focus of like but is it art what is art what isn't art and I've always found those things to be pretty useless but I did have an instructor in, in undergrad who posed the question a little differently and was like, what should art accomplish? Um, what is the purpose of art versus what is or isn't? And the, um, I wanna just point out like Tolstoy, Wilde, and Vonnegut. I don't know if I spelled any of those right. Who have kind of different definitions of art. And I, th I think I think it's Oscar Wilde. Yeah, because uh, the Oscar Wilde one I'm into because he he talks about that that art is useless and it kind of has to be. And as soon as art is not useless, it's kind of not art anymore. Um, And Kurt, Kurt Vonnegut talked about this idea of the function of an, uh, he talks about this canary in the coal mine view of the arts, which is the idea that like the function of the artist is that artists are so sensitive, so hypersensitive and unable to survive in the world basically, but they, they can identify problems that are, that the, the rest of humanity or culture or society has not quite, um, So Tolstoy had a book, What is Art? Um, I'm going to put these down and then I'll briefly summarize at least what I took away from these three things. Because I think it's important. I, I think these are... Um, this idea of like, you identify a problem, you have to solve it. Or the idea like when you complain about America, it's like, well, you should leave America. And that's ridiculous. Like. I can identify that my light bulb is out and that doesn't mean I should move. It means I should get a new light bulb. Or if it's thing I can't fix, like the toilet exploded or something, I, I feel like I could fix that. Something that I just couldn't fix, then it's like, yeah, I can identify a problem here and complain to the landlord. It's, I, I don't have to move. Like, um, So the three things here, what's going on chat? Jacqueline is probably the best art I've ever seen. If it's useful, it's not art anymore. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. My hair? It'll come back. It'll come back. Oh, what, do you miss my hair? Are you sad? It just needs to be... But my ideal hair length is a little longer than this so that it can stick up a little more crazy. Like, it's a little too short. Like, 
my, I have this view of myself as an old man, like old David Lynch hair. Oops, that was the wrong thing. Oh, good heavens. Man, Windows, you can do it, buddy. Okay. Yup. You got this, Windows. I almost. You almost had it. So, like, you'll see over the course of a few months, like, my hair will go from what it currently is into getting longer and longer. You know, we might... I don't have any waves in my hair, so I can't quite get to this, but just general, general crazy hair. What, like this? We're going for this. When I'm an old man, that's what I'm after. Somehow the waves. No, that's, it's all soft. There's no, there's no product. There's no spikiness to it. If I start going bald, man, I'm not ready for that. I'm not, I'm not ready for this. Um, okay, here's the thing. Uh, actually, I want to add one more thing to this. This is the thing that blew my mind. Okay, let's go through this real quickly. Problems and solutions. One, I, I have a problem with the conflation of identifying problems and solving problems, because I don't think... One, I don't think anybody who identifies a problem there just suddenly has the burden of fixing it. And I think artists in particular, um, should not have that burden. It's not, it's not their job to solve problems. They can identify problems all day and that's essential, but not solving them. And then, uh, so the purpose of art versus what is art is just this idea of Identifying what is or isn't art is not very useful. It's not useful for society, I think, and it's not very useful for an artist. But it can be useful for an artist to say, like, well, what is the purpose of what I am doing? And a way that I had that phrase to me in the realm of creativity that kind of blew my mind, I think I've talked about this before, was I had an instructor that on the first day of class, just as a way of getting to know us, was like, well, what kind of things do you want to make? Do you want to make useful things, interesting things, or beautiful things? And that like became an obsession for me and became the topic of my master's thesis because what i realized was i don't want to make useful things i don't want to make tools i don't want to make i don't want to make things that are for other people to make things i don't that's just not what i want to make there's a realm i like useful things i want people to make useful things i don't want to make useful things that's not what i want to make um and in reality i often make interesting things like I think I think I make things that are like oh that's interesting but that's separate from things that are beautiful and and have like the resonance of a beautiful thing because to some extent these are mutually exclusive um, you there's some overlap in these things but I think when you when you like set forth to create something broadly it's gonna fall in one of these in one of these three categories so that was a big eye-opener for me and then three things to just kind of contextualize that are the art definitions of Tolstoy, Wilde, and Vonnegut. So Tolstoy has a book called What is Art that I have not read, I don't think. I think I've just read excerpts of it, unless it was just an essay, maybe I read it. But the the summary I came up with was he was like, okay, look, we, we have ways to communicate and I have ways to, and this is me paraphrasing the idea. I'm not even paraphrasing Tolstoy. I'm like summarizing the idea as, as I interpreted it. But we have ways to communicate with each other and we have ways that I can express ideas to you and then you'll take those ideas in and so on. But the, the person of, of the function of art is more like, oh, I have an, a feeling in me. I have an um, like a, a emotional experience. I have some interior world um, out kind of potentially outside of the world of logic that I want you to have this experience in you. It's not the same as me just telling you about it. I can say like, oh, I feel sad. That's not the same. Um, maybe you can rely on some you know, sympathy or empathy there, but wow, I'm just getting complete over and over and over scam calls from Ecuador, just one after another. Cool. Uh, the uh, So in his mind, the function of art is to say like, I have a feeling in me and I want to put that feeling in you. And the art is the mechanism by which I can do that. I can create a thing, whether it's a novel or whatever, whatever the thing is, he was obviously a novelist, 
Um, I can create a thing and I can transport that feeling so that you experience that feeling. And that is not the same thing at all as explaining that feeling. And I think for me personally, that is the closest definition of like, what is the function of art that I, that I personally adhere to? I mean, I don't know that I align with it hundred percent, but that, that idea of it's a way to communicate a certain inner, my inner world to you, um, I think is, is important. Oscar Wilde has this letter where he kind of talks about that art is like sort of useless by necessity. And if it's not useless, it's kind of not art. Um, it's a pretty short letter. And then Vonnegut has the thing where it's, yeah, like he, he, he has what he calls the canary in the coal mine theory of the arts where, you know, if you know the metaphor, miners would take a canary down with them. And if the canary died, they would know that there was some noxious fumes in the air or whatever that killed the very sensitive animal before it would kill them. And so, uh, he kind of thinks like, well, that's what the artist is for. And he, again, a novelist, um, actually weirdly picked three writers for this. <clears throat> probably because writers write and they wrote about art. Uh, but yeah, the idea just being like, you're hypersensitive to whatever the, whatever the thing is, the state of the world, the state of society, the state of some certain inner emotion, whatever. And you can, you can recognize and highlight that, uh, maybe before the broader culture is, is, is aware of it. <clears throat> what is going on over here? Chat, you're just chatting it up. <clears throat> transplants? I thought if you got transplants, it would come from here. Because I have, I have, I feel like I have pretty robust neck hair. So maybe someday if I needed, um, needed hair transplants. Oh, you said permanent musk. I read that as like Elon Musk, because doesn't he have hair transplants? <laughs> I don't know if I want curls. I, maybe these are a little. <clears throat> Wait, the three categories? These three categories. Useful, interesting, or beautiful. Those three categories? I would make a dog. Okay, are we all, we're all caught up. We're on the same page now. Yes, these categories. So, and I realized, you know, I had made a fair number of things that were like useful, kind of out of obligation. Like these various things of like, oh, here's some automator action to download PDFs, uh, turn URLs into PDFs. And I supported that for like 10 years or something like that until eventually I was like, you know what? I don't want to make this thing. Like, I don't actually care about this. That's still on my site. It's probably still on my site. People still email me about this occasionally. This, this automator action I made, maybe I finally took it down because I want people to leave me alone about it. But this, this thing is kind of useful. Like I had a few things that were like kind of utilities or sort of, um, did I really get rid of that? I guess I did. Good for me. I guess I want people to stop bothering me about it. That doesn't seem like me though. It definitely seems like me to leave something up for all of eternity in my portfolio. Hmm. Well now, okay, it still exists somewhere. 2012.05. Oh, I probably did an update at it at some point. Yeah, here it is. I think I did an update and I updated the date. I thought I even, this doesn't even seem like the latest thing. Anyway, whatever. Anyway, I used to make things that were like utility things and I don't, I just don't want to. Like, I just don't want to do that. I don't want to support tools. I don't want to do support questions. I just don't want to. Interesting things, I think for better or worse, is the things that tend to come out of me. Like emotionally resonant things are, are tricky. Where does a game land? I think I've seen, like, I think you want your game to be beautiful. I think generally people want their games to be beautiful. Maybe if you're just trying to uh, make a trillion dollars from microtransactions, like interesting might also align with sort of obsessive, you know, like extremely engaging probably also falls in the, falls in the realm of interesting. So I think there's plenty of people that try to make games that fall into the interesting realm. 
he heavily engaging realm, we might say. Um, but yeah, I think you, I think you want, I think you want a game to be beautiful. PUBG, um, so as far as, so the thing to me that seemed to be the thing that made PUBG take off was that it gave people a, a visceral feeling of anxiety that they do not have in their normal day-to-day -day lives. Like watching streams, especially early on, now people may be too casual, like it's people are too used to it, but I feel like early on, like, People played that game like they were horrified, like hiding in a bathroom in a frying pan, like jumpy at the slightest moment. Like, I, I think, I, I, yeah, I'd be hard to like, I'd be, I'd be curious to know like how much of that was intent and how much of that was a little bit of an actual result. But I think like the ability to create that kind of emotion in a human, like an emotion that they just would never have, except maybe at an amusement park, um, is, is a pretty beautiful thing. Um, now, there's parts of it that are like the scoring and the hooks and ranking and things like that that are maybe more, more interesting, getting into ballistics, things like that. It's probably a combination of the two. But I, I, I think the thing that, um, that really made it take off was the emotional resonance of like, this is a nightmare scenario. Um, Uh, where's your feelings? Emotions not found. I'm sorry. Yeah, I think so. So, like, uh, Dark Souls, I think, is an interesting one because when you hear the designers talk about it, I think it was around the Dark Souls 2 time, talking about how they, they wanted um, dignity, like, which is a little weird to think because it's like, oh, it's dark, it's it's difficult, it's punishing, but, like, dignity was a was a, like, guiding term in their design of the game and its spaces and i think that i think that bears out and i think that that helps with like your your feeling of um you know even if you're 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 helpless and small and getting smashed and killed over and over again you like you pick yourself up and you dust off and you go again and again like i think there's something to that and i mean obviously i mean i will also say of course these are reductive certainly um and i don't and you can probably find a lot of items, a lot of games, a lot of whatever that, that you could argue in, in these categories. But I guess I'm talking a little bit less about the result and more about the, the intent. Like the, the intent as a creator of like, this is what I want to put into the world. I want to put into the world a thing that is useful and helps people. I want to put into a world a thing that is interesting and engaging and gets people like thinking about something or involved in something. Or I want to put something into the world that is beautiful and makes people feel. Um, and those those intents are the lines are fuzzy, but I think as a guiding principles, they're 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 somewhat mutually exclusive. Not fully, because nothing really is. Okay, so. I ranted about that for 30 minutes on stream. Could probably boil that down a little bit. So what we want to do <clears throat> I'm going to I'm going to come with three simple circuits. And they will be um Seeing with a photo, what do you call that? A photo resistor or a photo cell? I call it a photo cell, but is that right? I'll call it a photo resistor. So that's how we're going to see the world. Very simple circuit. All we need is a photo cell, in which I have a billion of them. I mean, a photo resistor. I think they're the same thing. Um, photo resistor? Yeah. Uh, because all we need is a resistor and a photo cell and a microcontroller. Um, sight with a photo cell. Touch with So I'm going to put these into categories and just say 
that the uh, the capacity or the resistive sensing, which is not really the right term, but that's what I just call it. Like the idea of like the makey makey where you have a super strong resistor and then you have um, a human as an alter. Let's it's, it's more like conductive, like you are being a conductor in that, but I'll just call it just as a distinction from what is going on. Uh, we'll do touch capacitive sensing. I need to dig up. I have this little capacitive sensor that is cool and I like it. And it's really easy and simple. But I think I'm going to try to bust out the CapSense library also and put that on a few Arduinos because it's handy. Um, I could do smell. I have. I, I, I'm only going to do three senses today because these are really beginnery people. The only sensor I have on hand that deals with smell is an alcohol gas sensor. So I could build a circuit that could see how drunk the students are. Um, would be pretty easy. But I think we're going to st stick with sight, touch, and hearing. Um, hearing, I'm going to cheat on a little bit. Um, I'm not going to do any microphone stuff. One, because I do not have... Is Piezo? Is that how you spell that? Is it E first? Piezo, yeah. Um, we'll just build like basically a knock sensor for the hearing, um, just to, uh, because it's, it's hearing is just vibration. Microphones are just membranes that vibrate. I don't have any electret microphones. And if I remember right, microphones with an Arduino are kind of annoying. Like I would probably just use an actual microphone. I guess if you just wanted to use it for some kind of intensity, uh, there's little breakouts with an amp. I guess it's not too bad. I just I don't I just don't I don't think I have one. Maybe I do. Maybe there's one in this box. But even that, you know, I feel like I guess this could be a way to just get some intensity. But I feel like a knock sensor is going to be fine. Yeah, I don't have any electric microphones handy. But I have two piezos and a vibration sensor, so we're just gonna call knocking our our hearing. Um, so I have these little piezos, piezo. How do you say that? What's the right way to say it? Um, that I think we just need to load with the resistor, and then we can reread it. And then I have. Um, Did I mess this up? I think I accidentally uploaded the wrong sketch, but I have this this cute little vibration sensor, which is broken right now. Pi Ezo? You're not, that's not a helpful, that's not a helpful pronunciation guide. Piezo? Piezoelectric or yeah, piezo. piezoelectric. Or, wait, an alternative? Piezo or piezo. Piezo or piezo. It's like piezo or piezo. Piezo. I'm going to go with piezo. Piezo is how I've always said it. Um, okay, so we're gonna just, we just need three simple little dudes. Um, and then I think for the output, we're just gonna use LEDs, just cause LEDs are easy and I have a million LEDs and anybody can do LEDs. And then if we want, if anybody wants to, we can plug it into their laptop and use processing to pull, uh, pull stuff in. Vibrations is what makes the world go round. Uh, I would agree with that, but many of the vibrations, we already talked about this. Most of the vibrations we care about are on the electromagnetic field and fewer vibrations are physical. Like 
care about sound. Quantum vibrations can suck it. Well, strong. Uh, Strong notions here from Life is Yours. So the arts and crafts, we are going to do some stuff. We are going to have... Um, a copper tape. Foil. Conductive thread. Wire as conductors. I got a glue stick. I got some paper. Whoa, how's it going? Living in a wheelchair. Thank you for the raid. Really appreciate it. Oh my gosh. Thank you for the follow, Big Tree 89. Man, you got me just, just in the middle of rambling. I super appreciate it. Thank you, Living in a Wheelchair. Hello, everyone. Hello, all. I was just being boring. Miss Quiz, thank you for the follow. What uh what was going on on the stream? Hope you had a good stream. What is up? I am teaching a workshop tonight. It's the second half of a workshop on invisible technology. And the idea being um let's just look at some stuff. Should I turn heat on? Is heat even on? I always forget. Oh yeah, you can give me kisses. Let's turn on heat. Draclin, you're a good bot. What a what should we do? The baby? Wooly bully, thank you for the follow. Okay, the baby's turned on. If you click on my stream, you can feed the baby while I talk. It's the ghost of the baby though. Maybe that's okay. Maybe we like the ghost of the baby. I am gonna hack you, but a little, just a little bit, not in a not in a bad way. Um, I think you'll like it. It'll, it's a little more like a massage, uh, where I don't touch you at all. You touch me by clicking me. Look at thank you for all the snacks. I, you're very nice. Thank you for the snacks. We'll we'll look at heat in a second. So the uh, I've been last week I taught kind of the intro part of this workshop, and now I'm gonna do the more hands-on part. And so in my mind, invisible technology. Here's some of my invisible technology projects. We'll take a gander at. Um, some of these I like feel a little dated by today's standards. I will say, we got stuff made of paper too, don't we? This thing. Um, so the idea with visual tech, visible, invisible technology is sort of that all through the 20th century, we looked at the future as a world of buttons and knobs and dials and especially in the later part of the 20th century technology became super intrusive and like if you just look around your room right now you will probably see wires and cables and usb hubs and black plastic rectangles all over the place and i'm kind of sick of it i'm kind of um not loving this world where all this technology just sort of intrudes into our home and doesn't integrate well so and the worst version of that is like this where in, in 2001 a space odyssey land where like basically everything is technology and we are we are the intruders there and i don't think humans really want that future i don't think humans really want a future where every single thing around them is tech except for them um i like like old tv consoles this idea was more like you know what this uh or even like old radio console. The idea was sort of like, we're going to put this thing in your home. You're going to have this technology in your home, but it's going to integrate nicely into your home. It's going to, you know, be made of real materials and look nice and look like furniture that you like. And then when you want to engage with the technology, you can. We, we moved away from this over the last hundred years. So specifically in the realms of like art and creativity, I want to encourage the, the students here to make, make things that are not so tech focused that are not all buttons and knobs and dials. So this thing is just vegetables. All the technology is hidden. It's a relatively simple circuit. Um, uh, thank you for the follow. Gaming for cancer, for 
Gaming for Cancer UK, awesome. Thank you for the follow. It took me a minute to, to read that word. Um, and then the Watchmen where it was also an idea of no visible tech. These are like weird little robots that sing to themselves. So they sound like this as light passes over the Argus. Um, it's got all these little photo cells here. So this is kind of the realm of the art that I, this has been a few years, but the art I was creating a few years ago, they're really focused on like somewhat complicated, somewhat sophisticated technological interactions that do not require USB cables and TVs and black rectangles and, and all of that stuff. I use that stuff, um, but I kind of want my world to not have it. I don't like actually looking around my room and seeing all this tech everywhere. Uh, so for the last few years, I've kind of cheated that by going into VR to avoid it. Um, this is another one where it's for the Children's Museum of Pittsburgh that are um, a circuit where you have to touch the moon in the middle and then you can touch the individual stars and it'll play notes, but the kids could hold hands and all of those things. So again, no visible tech, Everything, everything's hidden here. And so I'm trying to, this workshop is at PNCA and there's a lot of traditional art makers there, you know, printmaking, sculpture, painting. And I want to encourage them to find ways to incorporate technology into what they're working on without feeling like it has to look like whatever, like this, a black rectangle or this, a black rectangle or any other number of black rectangles that are in my room at this very moment. Does this make sense? Am I making sense over here? Anybody? Everybody? Snake Bites, how's it going? How often do you have to replace the beats? The beats did not, uh, they survive like one session. Anytime the beatbox comes out, you gotta, you gotta bust out some more beats. Um, I did, uh, you see an outlet? Wait, where? An outlet? Uh, oh, on the, I know, on, on reach, I'm sorry. Tall Tech, thank you. I know, I got, to, I shaving a haircut. It was time, it was time. On the wall, I'm sorry, Draculin, the museum, that was where the outlet was. I tried to hide it. I at least put a cover over it. I think of it after this, I think I put a cover over it. Oh no, what a shame. Oh, I'm sorry. No, look, that doesn't even go into my thing. This is something else. Mine is right here and it's covered. I did cover it and paint it orange, at least. It's ruined? Is it all ruined? I'm sorry. I loved the way the circuits looked on these. Thanks for the follow, Night Owls Gaming. Um, okay, so that is what I've been doing, and that's what I've been talking about. And so tonight we're going to focus on some circuits kind of like these. So this was a heart rate sensor I did a long time ago. The idea was that um, it's kind of a soft circuit where you just your heart rate is always visible on your sleeve. It's made of end lighten and some LEDs. Super simple circuit. Um, which I didn't make super well. I could have made that illumination a little better. But had some soft circuitry, conductive thread, but then I could just snap this onto the sleeve of my jacket, which I only owned one jacket, so I really did have uh, conductive buttons on it. And then a heart rate sensor ran down the sleeve, and then it would just always show my show my heartbeat, heart rate, um, which is fine. It was a relatively simple thing. My heart rate monitor was not very good. The way you make them is cool though. If you don't know how simple heart rate monitors work, they're pretty cool. Um, but the circuit itself was pretty cool because it was mainly, it was just a paper backing. So it was just paper and then all this is just copper tape. So there were no wires. Um, my soldering is not the best. I lost one of my circuit surface mount LEDs. So there's that thing. And then there's this thing that is basically all paper. Every part of this was paper with ex the exception of like maybe an at tiny or something to control the color. Wish I had more pictures of that one. Anyway, so we're gonna do some arts and crafts tonight um, in the realm of this stuff, I think. Oh, the Bebby is sleeping? What are you doing up there, Bebby? I need a different follower sound, one that's not too, not too stressful. If this stopped blinking, it was so bad. So the way you the way you make a, a heart rate monitor, or at least the way the easy way to make it is that you you just have an IR emitter and an IR um, 
an IR emitter and an IR sensor, and you just shine IR into your finger, and then you watch for it to bounce back. And every time your heart beats, some blood like flows out to all the capillaries and the like internal reflect reflectance, reflectivity of your body changes. And you can sense those variations and figure out a heart rate from it. Um, my circuit was bad. And so it very frequently looked like I didn't have a pulse. I'm just trusting you on this. Is this, is this an old British show called Heartbeat? Very nice. Um, okay, so what are we doing? We're talking about what we're gonna make today. So we gotta do some arts and crafts. Did I ever see that? I don't think so. I don't recognize your uh, your British friends. I like this guy. I like this guy's look. He's got a good look to him. This guy, I don't know. I don't know if I trust him. Saturday Night Entertainment, that's what you watch, watch as a kiddo. Oh, a heartbeat intro song, got it. Okay, so, we are gonna, we're gonna we've got our three simple circuit ideas. We're gonna talk about what we're gonna make. The capacitive sensing thing, I know there's like cap sense libraries for, uh, for Arduino, so that's what we're gonna use there. These guys should be pretty simple. So I already had the sketch for that somewhere, I thought. I gotta organize this stuff better. Too many Arduinos plugged into this computer. That's not the right one. Twisted, twisted fate, twisted fa fate. Thanks for the follow, appreciate it. Um, this port is you are you. So we got to talk about like, uh, we didn't really talk much about this. How do I want to call this? Um, Cause the LED we're either going to do like, it's a little weird way to put that because they're both digital, but we'll just talk about it a little bit. How do you feed the baby? If you just click on my stream, if you're on desktop, you should be able to feed the baby. The baby's always hungry. Yeah, I agree, Draculin. Here's what I actually here's what I was thinking for the for the bottom thing would be a combination of uh, bot made this and heat. So we would um maybe move the video up, leave some a section at the bottom. And then have little dudes that walk around. I know I've seen I've seen streams with other little dudes, but here, thank Snake Bye. It's ninety seven. Thank you. Um, the uh, have everybody walking around that is talking, and whenever they talk, if they set an emote, their little character would turn into the emote they used. And Jar fifty one, thanks for the follow. The uh, emote would reflect whatever. Um, whatever emote they used most recently, and maybe whenever they talked, there'd be some kind of little general bubble, even if we didn't show the text. And then you could click heat to control your own character. Is that crazy? Is that too ridiculous? I don't know. I think it could be fun. I think I think we want to get into that, and I also want to get into the crazy text thing with exploding text all over the place, but we got to get through this. We got to get through this workshop, right? We got to do it. Get this workshop out of our lives. Um, but I agree with you. We need something that's a little, like all the demos we have right now just kind of sit all over the top of the stream. So it would be good to have a thing that is, uh, yeah, being ready for raids. Ready for raids, get ready for the raids. Yeah, I agree. I, I want to, we need like a new layout for the screen. Something that's always going on, something that's always clickable. 
Okay, so we will talk about the circuits. We'll talk about analog versus digital, and at least what that means in Arduino world, um, or microcontroller world. We'll talk about talking to computers with serial communication. We will talk about, we're just gonna do LED output. I have so many colors of LEDs, all beautiful. Um, and then we will talk about, yeah. And then as far as the materials, we'll just play with whatever whatever we got. Here's the, so the circuit for this little Vibrati dude, does this work? Yeah. I don't know if that reads on stream very well. Probably not well. Alexa, turn out the lights. She didn't do it. She said okay, but she didn't do it. Alexa, turn out the lights. Alexa, turn on good night. Okay. Yeah, so right now this little piezo-based vibration sensor is sending its intensity to the green LED and then is just doing like a thresholdy thing on the orange LED. So this will be a simple dude. We'll probably, um, I did this one specifically because a student wanted to do something with drums, but I'm gonna do something separate with these piezos so we can just bang the piezos around maybe. Um, I just have to remember how to do that. She turned off a light. Yeah, she made she's she does her best, right? Uh, let me turn on. Um, let's turn on heat client, and then you all can control the lights. I should make a a better controller for that, right? Where you could change the uh, like pick colors for the lights on the fly. Have fun, rave. I guess you could do it with chat, but. I want to do heat stuff. Um, is this how this works? Yes. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Set up some kind of color wheel. Set up some, or some, even just a palette. Even just a color palette. Draculin, do you see what's in the chair back there? Life is yours. Can you see what is in that chair? It's a tote with art supplies in it. I got a tote, tote totes. It's my, it might be my favorite tote. It's a, based on a, uh, I don't even know what happened to John Campbell. He lost his mind, unfortunately. The creator of, he was, I think the creator of Hourly Comic Day and then went on to, no, um, Is it not John Campbell? Yeah. But he had a series of pictures for sad children. But then he lost his mind, and I think he had a Kickstarter and sold books, but then he burned all the books. Yeah, he burned them. He, I lost his mind a little bit. It's amazing. I love pictures for sad children, but he did, um, it's not the soup guy. No, that's a different guy. Although weirdly, my second favorite tote is an Andy Warhol Campbell suit can tote. So the university you're going to is selling the tote. Can I get a link to the tote? You gave them how much money? Just money for the tote or more money? Just tote money? Alexa, turn on stream. Uh, wait, I want the tote. I want the tote. Life is yours. I want to support you in your university endeavors. Oh, well, that's a mistake. You gave him too much money. Wait, I, I want to know about the tote. Can I get a link to the tote, please? Can you mail me a tote? Okay, so... I would, I would, I would buy a tote. I would buy an or... Oh my god, could you get a, could you get a tote from hell? I want souvenirs from Hell Norway, please. Well, she's horrible. Welcome to Hell. No, that's Grand Cayman. Please go to Hell and go to the gift. Ooh, are there any totes in this picture? These might be totes right here. Is this a tote? But I want official hell merchandise only.
Hell in a hand basket. I would take a I would take a hell hand basket. Whoa, that toad is amazing. That is a gorgeous tote. Okay, life is yours. What's it gonna take? How do I get this tote? That's weird. Was a Google search with no images? Is this shopping center? Is this a giant tote? Is their logo a giant tote? Uh, okay, I need this. I want, here, okay. Are you making a list, Life Features? Here's what I want. I want this. I want this. For sure. Do you think there's like, um, on eBay, can I get some totes? I can't believe their logo is a tote. This isn't gonna work. No, 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 it's gotta come from the real, real deal. Steal a sign? Yeah, please, rob the, rob the hell shopping center. Okay, uh, I'm getting distracted again. Aren't, aren't I? So we need a quick sketch for the piezo, and we need a quick sketch for the, uh... I had some resistors somewhere. I've lost them all. I need a mega ohm resistor. Which I forget the colors for. Touch my goats. A mega ohm resistor is brown, black, green. Brown, brown black, green. I need to, it's probably really boring when I do this and I don't have another camera. I gotta need to get another camera. So I'm gonna be in um, Pittsburgh again, probably for the whole month of July. And this time I want to stream while there. So I've gotta figure out some kind of mobile setup. You can't see it. It's got a green stripe on it. So I'm gonna do this in a pretty lazy way, I think. The purpose of this is these dudes are producing AC and that's not what my microcontroller wants. But if you, I don't even know that I fully understand the reason this works, but if you just put a resistor across this, it will squash it enough that it's basically zero to five volts. Um, and that is good enough. Rage headquarters, thank you for the follow. Wait, red touch yellow. Do I cut the green wire or the red wire? What's the answer here? Okay, um, which Arduino do I do this with? This Arduino already looks happy. Maybe we just add more stuff to the Arduino that already looks happy. We're just making a new sketch. I should probably name these sketches and be sensible. Oh, I forgot we also set it up where we could do Arduino in Visual Studio Code but now I don't remember how. And I feel like we should just move ahead, move on with our lives. So this is, this was our piezo dude, which is probably gonna be basically identical. In fact, it might actually just be identical with the uh, buzzer versus the vibration sensor. The vibration sensor is probably just more sensitive. Eat both wires, but this wire is green and gray. Are you colorblind? You might be seeing this as a red wire. Maybe I'm colorblind. Is this red? Um, okay, so that is this this guy. What are we gonna do about these cameras? I gotta order a camera, huh? If I'm gonna do this stuff. So. I think I can just rip this out 
and put this in instead. Yeah, that doesn't work at all. This is a bad idea. Whose idea was this? This doesn't even work a little bit. Nope. Total failure. Okay, great. Um, that was this. It may be that our serial value is too, too tiny. Maybe too tiny. So if we do the plotter. I don't see anything. I just see a noisy mess. I thought this was... <laughs> what have I done? Okay, there we go. It really doesn't work very well. But I can get it, I can get taps. Weirdly, I would have thought that the knock would work. Just like, I feel like I've had that work with these in the past, but it seems not happy. What if I tap? What's wrong with my circuit, everybody? Oh, maybe this, oh, I think it was just loose. So I cross eight. This thing sucks. Is it so inconsistent? Oh, the Betty looks great. I know, uh, Rage. I haven't been. I've been mainly doing like VR stuff and Unity stuff on stream. I haven't been doing any hardware stuff, so I do not have a separate second camera. So this is going to be a slightly lame stream. Apologize. So blow on it first. It would cost $45 to send a tote. Amazing. Um, yes, I will get I will get some little friendly camera because I need to get a camera to travel with anyway. Um, did I totally break this? I'm gonna plug this back in. This one is very sensitive because you know that's what it's for. Um, this one seems like trash, but. I also just like found it in a box, so it is d distinctly possible that it just doesn't work very well. Strong possibility. Likelihood even. But I feel like it was working a little a moment ago. So all I'm doing is trying to knock on this. Oh, you know what? I think he... I should send the email right now. So heat, I think is busted. I think heat is not available for other people to install and I need to respond to, okay, wait, let's do the, okay, diversion. I'm pretty sure I have an email from Twitch saying, hey, why can't we use, which, you know, you think we would know, but it's the, it's the developer relations person from Twitch. Pretty sure sent me an email. No, not that one. Mm. OK. 
Okay, let's do the fun thing where I accidentally show something wrong. So this is the new version that we never got around to posting. We need access So who Awesome. Thanks, Rage. I'm glad you like it. It's pretty fun, but it is a little annoying that it is not easily usable right now. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Okay, uh, I'm going to respond. Okay, so she sent me Well, she said to whitelist her, but... Is that her? I think she maybe mistyped her... Twitch ID, which is problematic. No, she's right here. Wait. Okay, never mind. I have to write back to her at another time. I was gonna try to add her, but no. Uh, seems like she maybe sent me the wrong ID. I, uh, okay, anyway, I, I'll try to, I think there is a problem with Heat where you can't install it right now because they re-enabled a, a, a whitelist that I did not think was enabled. Don't worry about sending me down a different rabbit hole. That's all I do all day is go down weird rab rabbit holes. Um, I could manually whitelist rage, yeah. Am I saying that correctly? Or is it Ray G E? Yeah, I'm not. I I don't like the whitelisting. I I don't know. They tw Twitch improved this experience, the dev experience to a large degree, but. Still some things not so great. Okay, so I have added you both, <clears throat> excuse me, to the whitelists, uh, the, the streamer whitelist and the testing whitelist for the unreleased new version, which has very minor. Ray as in rage. Okay, Um. so what were we doing? We are trying to figure out why this piezo sucks. Let's try this other piezo, and maybe it doesn't suck. And if this doesn't work, we're just not gonna have a uh, Okay, it works. It's just very sensitive. <sighs> I'm kind of okay, fine. It it seems it works better with the uh I don't know if you can see the light. You can't see the light. Never mind. Blowing works on this one. Hello. Ah, we'll just blow on it. Okay, great. We're doing great, everybody. We can we can light up a light by blowing on it. Um. Okay, so we got we have a thing that we can blow on. We have a thing that we can tickle a little bit which is the vibration sensor. We're calling those our sound inputs. We have this capacitive high level of hipter, hipster. Is that true? Um, this guy's working and the, the whole wire is acting as a sensor, which is kind of weird, but also kind of cool. And you can, there's a way to change the sensitivity of this, but I don't remember how to do it. Um, the bigger the electrode, like if you had a big old metal thing, I probably shouldn't use my laptop for that. I could use a piece of foil though. Let me find some wire trimmers and a piece of foil. The mountains are on fire? 
Oh, that's a bummer. Is hell gonna burn down? The, um, Portland has been on fire a few times over the last few years. California is basically always on fire in the summer. Um, we haven't seen Grimbone for a while. Last I, we talked to Grimbone, all of Australia was on fire. So I hope he is okay. Um, I'm going to get some wire strippers and some aluminum foil. I'll be right back. Far away, you're safe and sound. Good. What would I do? What would we do if something happened to life is yours? We'd have to. Dracon and I would have to mount a rescue plan. Okay, so I think I already have a cable soldered on this for some other project. So I think if we just strip it. And like stick it on some aluminum foil, then we will have. A fancy capacitive sensor but the bigger the electrode i think the more sensitive it is um to electromagnetic field disturbances um so you can in some cases not even touch it right now this is too big uh i think if you unplug this this particular chip which is the AT42QT1010. If you unplug it and then, oh yeah, this is cool. So I can get within like, there's no way I can show you this. This is the worst stream of all time. If I get even within a few inches of this aluminum foil, it activates, which is pretty handy. Man, I want to do the key presses though. So the thing that I want to try <clears throat> is this other library, this CapSense library try it instead of using this board. I like this board. Oh, did someone click that? Someone clicked the lights. But I would prefer, I think, to... Uh... <clears throat> Just do it with... Oh, you know what? I wonder if it works on this chip. I guess we'll see. So I'd prefer to just use a stock Arduino without a custom sensor. But there is a... I'm going to fun rave. Yeah, I guess it doesn't make any sense to have that be the hot spot when we're not full screen. Okay, so the one that is like the one, I feel like, is or at least the one that's been around for a long time, is this Paul Badger one. The only thing is I just, I don't know what, uh... if it only supports certain chips is the thing. So let's try the Due programming point, Due, Dewey? What did we just say it was called? I forgot how to say it already. Due, Dewey. Not the, not French, Italian. Okay, we want this and we want capacitive sensor. And thanks for the rave. Was there any documentation? Capacit, capacit, man, I spelled that. I don't know what I was doing. Capacitive. Welcome at the club. I think a lot of people have written this kind of thing, but we want we want this one because I just do. So this does add. Okay, we do have Dua support. That's good. Um. So.
Yeah, the crowning is a issue. I've had that problems before. That problem before. Um, yeah, give me a demo sketch. Yeah, there can be a weird thing when you're doing stuff like this, like capacitive sensing, or anything that's sensitive to noise in some respect. If you don't, if you have your just Arduino just plugged into a laptop and you don't have that laptop in, or if you have your laptop plugged in but the charger isn't grounded, you know, weird stuff happen. So I've had I've had weird stuff in that realm. Capacitor. Wait, what did I say? Did I say something weird? Sometimes the things that come out of my mouth are not exactly the things that I'm thinking. Um, okay, so 10, a 10 mega ohm resistor. I don't know if I have any 10 mega ohm resistors on me in my, in my pockets. We're just going to go with one mega ohm because that's what I have. Between. C pen is the sensor pen. Try to pronounce a foil metal on this pen. Yeah. With an insulator. So you need a resistor between those. Sure. Which I have one mega ohm, so that'll just have to do. And then you also want to plug in. Okay. Pins one, two, eight. I wonder if we can fit the, if my, this seems like a good recipe for breaking my Arduino. But I wonder if I can fit a resistor and a jumper in the hole at the same time. Only one or two or three ways to find out. Didn't I just grab a one mega ohm resistor? What'd I do with it? Hello? I thought it was in my very hand. In my very hands. Okay, we will just steal another one. My precious resistor pack. Oh no. Everything's falling apart. I used to be so good at reading resistor color values, and now I'm just I'm terrible at it. I forgot the rules. It's gone. It's gone from my brain. Okay, let's grab another mega ohm. Using up all my mega ohm resistors. And. Uh, let's ignore all these other ones and just do between so pin two two and four four two Okay, so then we need to put a mega ohm resistor across pins two and four, and then also cram a cable into pin two. It doesn't fit. <gasps> it fits. I don't know if that was a good idea. I'm gonna break my Arduino. This is my Arduino, do it, do it, do. Also, it's my favorite one. I don't wanna hurt it. Um, so we are pointing towards that guy. Yeah, great.
Okay. Oh yeah. Okay. That's a value changing. I want to not do this though. We want to... What did we do before? Oh, I want a print line and then... Um... Yeah. Don't do this. Let's do a print line and then we can use the plotter. And we can see values when I touch. Oh no, it's busy because I'm sending data constantly. Can I trick it? Can I reset it fast enough to send? Yes, tricked it. Good. No, okay, that's that's pretty impressive. This library works reasonably well. So all I'm doing, all I have done is I have stuck a resistor across these two pins and probably messed up my Arduino and crammed a jumper cable in there. And when I, uh-oh, did I unplug my Arduino? I should have known when I heard the Windows Unplug sound. Okay, we gotta, we gotta buy a webcam. What should I get though? I kind of hate Logitech webcams. All the problems I had previously. I think I want to do one of the weird razor ones with a light um, so I can travel with it. So... I feel like I always end up with this problem. Um, Viewing nonsense over the uh, spewing nonsense over the serial port while I'm trying to upload. Okay, so I just have this dangly cable, and whenever I touch it, I get a a pretty substantial jump. So, the question is, is if I like wrap this on some tinfoil, squish it up in some rental? You want me to unbox the razor? But I won't have a camera to do the unboxing. What a tragedy. Okay, so I can get a little bit of a jump. Yeah, on my giant aluminum foil. Okay, cool, I'm into it. We got the CapSense library works. Whatever you touch your dangly, whenever I touch my dangly cable. So the, um, you know how capacitive sensing works, Jacqueline? Like the same way as like a capacitive touchscreen phone or whatever. Basically like your body just becomes part of the circuit either by directly touching or even being in proximity to your body essentially becomes a capacitor in the circuit. So you're kind of, I'd have to like refresh my memory on the exact principles here, but you're just, you're kind of sucking some electrons into your big, wet, gross body. And capacitive sensing works just by saying like, oh, something is sucking electrons into its big, gross, wet body. I should do something. So that's how this this little dude works. Like this is a specialized chip for that. Um, but this library for Arduino is able to use features of the microcontroller, like the, of the of the chip which in this case is a little Amtel chip of some, some flavor to do essentially the same thing. So you have two, and I don't know what's going on internally in the library, but externally, I'm just, I have like an input port and an output port kinda, and I have bridged them with a resistor. And then also on the input port, I have just a dangly wire. And you can look over there and see in the serial prints, whenever I touch the dangly wire, it changes the reading that I'm getting on that input port. By, you know, an arbitrary value, it's just an arbitrary analog value, which I think is, I think, uh, 
I think can be a 10-bit number. So it's like zero between between zero and 1024. And in this case, I'm like my signals are pretty low. In some cases, I'm just breaking like three or four of that. So like it's a very small percentage change, but it is enough to reliably sense. So I'll just do like a threshold and say, oh, if this thing crosses this threshold, then whatever, turn on a light or hit a space bar or whatever. Um, should be an easy peasy thing. I don't know if that was a very good explanation. I gotta remember the, the, the exact mechanics of capacitive sensing. You know, humans are big, big, big moist bags. Yeah, can, de can de detect and measure anything that is conductive or has a dielectric dielectric different from air. So this this is sensitive enough, especially this dude. Where's my dude? I lost my dude already. This guy can even be, especially if you put this on a big electrode, like a big piece of whatever, metal, aluminum foil or sheet metal or whatever, it can be even behind wood or whatever, and when you touch it, you'll still get it. And if it's sensitive enough, you can even just get close to it um, and and detect proximity. So it can it can it can detect through even non-conductive media, which is pretty cool. Um, Yeah, a capacitor is dynamically formed because your gross body is being the capacitor. Oh, that's kind of cool as far as like knowing exactly where something happens on a screen. <gasps> Draclin, what a darling! What a what a what a man among men, Draclin. Thank you. Draclin's out of control. Hey, the count worked. I don't know why it worked that time. Yeah, we fixed one thing. That was very kind of you, Draclan. I really appreciate that. Thank you very much. Imagine though, if we did that and it like, if, what if every animation just said Draclan, no matter what happened? Because in general, it's gonna be Draclan, right? And so whenever, you know, if like, whenever you did that, it would just, maybe the, maybe my whole stream should just be this. Just like, Various Draclan related uh, interactive text things. Oh, finally. Good. Wait, but I got a haircut. That does not uh, represent me very well anymore. What am I going to do with that emote? Is it worth it? Is it worth the subscription just to use that? Okay, love it. I've never, this is a strange feeling for me because I've never seen my face, my own face spammed in chat before, but here we are now. Um, life is yours, where's your Where's your overlay that just creates bubbles out of an, can, can, uh, can I do it with this emote? Where's your, uh, where's your bubble overlay? Can you send me a link that already is pointing to that? If you don't mind. Okay, so we have a way to... Uh, we didn't really do the light sensing. So how do we want to do this? Um, and what do we want to do with it? Like, I love the keyboard press thing because it's so much easier than dealing with other stuff. I just don't have... I, I don't know. This is going to be really worth it. Like. The, the thing where you can emulate a keyboard, as we determined last time, some Arduinos support it, some do not. The Uno does not. I got some some Teensies, but they're kind of a pain, unfortunately. Like, they don't work kind of in native Arduino land. You have to mess with your Arduino install to do it. And I just don't know if it's worth the trouble for tonight. So, I think that's okay. I think we'll just do stuff with, if we want to do anything, we'll just do it in processing. So the question then, here's a question that I already know the answer to. The answer is no. 
I was gonna say, should we use Fermata for this? But the answer is we should not use Fermata. We should just use processing. I would like to use P5, but you have to have this other dude. And all of the computers should have P5 and processing. I mean, processing uh, and Arduino already installed. So we should be able to do the thing. Okay, so we can capacitively touch. Great. We can jiggle with piezos. And so the only thing we need to do is to be able to see with the, uh, what is it called? Photo resistor, do we say that's the word we like? Petition to get my prefix to be SMT. I think you can, um, I maybe when you're a partner, you can do that. Oh my gosh. You can feed me eggplants. Oh, beautiful. Oh, I, I have to chroma key this, right? Or will it automatically cut out the background as a browser source? I'm just gonna automatically cut out the background, I think. Wait, is it is it heat enabled? I don't want a chroma key. I refuse to, in fact. I refuse to. Oh, because it's P5. So I have to. What is causing the explosions? Why is my head exploding? Also, why is it why is the aspect ratio weird? You can have transparent windows? Yeah. All my heat stuff is. Like, I always go in and do stuff like this, like in the body. That's what it's trying to do here. It's trying to set the body background. Now, if you're doing, if you're doing stuff in P5, it's probably drawing on a canvas. And having a canvas with a transparent background, I don't know about. Um, there's probably a way to do that. I mean, in fact, I feel pretty sure there is a way to do that, um, that you could. Oh, the gifts are, these are divs? Yeah, then you don't need, I mean, where are you setting the, where's the background color even coming from? Images in a canvas? I would just, not use p5 and just draw it but even so i feel like there's i feel like you could figure it out why is the aspect ratio set to something like four by three why isn't it dynamic i want more features i want a refund okay i'll add a chroma key Ooh. can i choke it My browser source is full size though. Is it lying? Let me refresh the cache of current page. When I stretch it to full width, it stretches. Is it something weird about my browser? Oh, it's my browser. You're right, it's my browser. I mean, my browser source. I apologize for doubting you. Okay, great. Is this what you wanted? Are you happy now? Frame rate seems a little low. This is weird. I thought you wanted this. I thought you wanted it. <clears throat> I did want it a little bit. Thank you for doing that, Life is Yours. I appreciate it. What is it? What is making it explode? What is what's the explode? What's causing the explosions? This isn't hooked up to heat, is it? Oh, wait. It's listening to chat? I didn't know you did that. Cool. Um, How are you doing that? Are you just directly connecting to TMI in, in, your, in your front end code? 
Or do you have some back end for this? Twitch.js, you're using Twitch.js on the front end? That means you have secret keys in your, you have secret keys exposed, I think. <gasps> Outrageous. Wait, you don't? How do you log in? How are you logging in in Twitch.js with no authentication on the front end? It doesn't care? Maybe? I think you have something exposed that you probably don't want exposed. It may not matter that much. I mean, it might be. It might be your OAuth key for the for whatever whatever you used. If you did the OAuth key creation, I think you probably don't want that in front end code. You could just move all this to glitch and have a simple back end. Um, what did I need to do? I needed to do. Um, how do we make things transparent? I forgot. Is that in color correction? Yeah. No key? Are you telling the truth? How did you connect then? How is this possible? Oh my gosh, look at this. So incredible with a quote here. Look at this, look at this documentation. Incredible. I'm very impressed. What a beautiful header. Did you did you hand format all of your uh, did you hand format all of this? I love it. It's gorgeous. Yeah, it's look it's beautiful. It's nice to see that. Um so you're telling me TMI doesn't have to have any kind of auth? I thought you had to, maybe just to do stuff you have to. I thought you had to have, um, like when you set up your client. Really? You don't have to say anything? I feel like I had to for something, but maybe it was for some... No, I love it. I love that stuff. It reminds me of old like release notes, like where's release notes? That would have cool, cool ASCII art. It was always beautifully formatted. Like, check this out. Yeah. Check it. Yeah. Does this say Rage? Rage, is this you? I think this is you. From 1997, the MS Money 97 retail version. I love that. I truly love this stuff. And I'm so I'm into this. I really like ANSI art. I wish ANSI art would make a comeback. One day we need to make an ANSI filter for uh, for Unity. Look how good these look. The thing that ruined this realm was uh, non-fixed with fonts. Ruined everything. Wikipedia. Is this real? Can I like... Oh, a .info file. I see. Kind of forgot about that. Yeah, info files and publishing of wares. I was hoping that would be a top, top level domain where everything looked awesome. Cool. Cool. I love it. Okay, getting getting a little distracted. We got distracted again. It happened. Rage, you don't have to, it's okay. We're not gonna report you. I mean, it's 97, probably the statute of limitations is over for pirating copies of Microsoft money. No, that's I would them. I started reading your sentence about the old cheat programs, and before I even finished the sentence, I knew it was going to end with awesome music. Like old, uh, like crack generators and serial number generators always had awesome. What would you call that? Those are like mods, right? Like, like, uh, like Amiga mods is often how that music would be included. I love that stuff.
MIDI? It was sometimes MIDI, but I feel like the really good ones were like Amiga mods. I love... I was into making mods for a while. I should dig up all my old mods. I used to like Lysandra Lapine. I need like, um... I just want to hear the music of a good... It's like, not only am I going to steal this software, I'm going to rock out while I do it. Wait, what's the alert? What happened? Keygenmusic.net? Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Okay, where's Ray? Ray's personal company. Do they... I got Razor. No Ray? I mean Rage. Awesome! Oh, download as a 7Z? No online player? You can't play online? What year is this? Okay, I love this, but I also hate it because I should be able to play these online. Quake 3 Arena intro. The best Keygen music, one hour mix. Awesome. That's an old thing. Even back in like like Amiga Commodore era of, so like Amiga crack screen, the people who cracked the software would, would often introduce a, uh, a, like they would introduce their own screen that was amazing. Let's see, Amiga, yeah, crack intro marathon, awesome. So they would like crack the software and re-release it. sketch. <clears throat> and then the um, it would have music and graphics and say, we cracked it. And what's funny now in the realm of like games conservation, often the cracked versions are what's available and they're what can make it like run on, you know, run in emulators or whatever. So weirdly, these cracked versions are in some ways almost like the canonical copies. Cool. Excuse me, these are all good. I need more of this. What happened to this? Remember when computers used to be good? Yeah, that thing to pass in the clicks. Yeah, we'll do that one day. I would, I, we could make this to a more heady demo. Maybe with real transparent background. I like the ones with a little bit of animation though. I love that they always have music. Remember how we're supposed to be preparing for a workshop that's tonight? No music. Get it. Endless piracy. Look at that guy. Ooh, that's a good one. Now we gotta get into like demo scene stuff. Oof. <clears throat> Cracking MS DOS games? I tr I never really got into that. I did. I mean, that had like a short stint in my teens with some uh, like going into hex editors and changing numbers and almost without exception just breaking things where they wouldn't run. Like that that was kind of the extent of my. Uh, professional cracking career was just making software unrunnable. Okay, we need to set up a little... Uh, light. Am I going to get a copyright uh, 
strike for using this demo music? For, for pirating pirate music? Is that going to happen to me? That'd be pretty funny. I kind of hope it does happen. If like I'm, I am stricken. Okay, I gotta remember. Yeah, submit the claim. Dang it. Uh, okay, so. So for a photo cell, we need three wires, right? So we gotta cross that bead from the middle. I'm trying to think of the easiest way to do this. I guess we just use three. song. Wait, look at the- wait, what happened? Yeah, the wavy tech seems to be popular. That must have been a, uh, not difficult thing to do, in my guess. Okay, <clears throat> so, we need to go... Power's gonna go to one leg. It's a little bit weird, but that's fine. And then, other leg is gonna be kind of our read. And then we also need to go from that into um, our ground, it's like our ground gray. I'm not just doing this on a breadboard, but for some reason I've decided that this is how I want to do this. Uh, and here we are. This may not work well at all. I'm realizing. I should probably just do it on a breadboard, huh? It's too late. In my heart, I've already decided not to use a breadboard. up all my cool little cool little dudes. I have a million breadboards, why don't I just use a breadboard? Connect a bot to ICQ? Man I wonder if my like free node password still works. Is that a thing? I can't remember what uh, I think I, I can't remember what ERC networks I I preferred. <laughs> I would do an IRC. I mean, that's what's so weird to me. Like, I'm sure I've rambled on this before, but like, I was really into IRC, and then AOL Instant Messenger came along, and I kind of hated it, but that's what everybody started using. And so I, like, begrudgingly, way too late, moved to AIM. And then for decades after that, it was just focused on, like, one-to-one -one messaging. And then suddenly, in the last few years, AIM got killed, and Slack and Discord are back, and they're basically IRC. I'm, I know I'm not the only person who recognized this, but it just... There's some there's some level of uh, poetic justice there. I feel like that's like aim aim was the aim deserved to die. IRC was the real deal from the start. 
And now I sit in Slack. But I'm on too many Slack servers. People, people are a little overzealous with that. Um, okay, so power, we decided was purple for some reason. And that's got to be 3.3 .3 volts, because this is a duh. And we decided that gray was ground. And then we need a, 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 a just, just do A0. So we're just going to read... Analog 0, right? And this is going on the due. This seems overly complicated. I just want to read the analog in of the... We don't need any of this crap. Forget it. <clears throat> What is it? Serial? Okay, maybe we did need a little bit of this crap. I don't know why I'm doing everything at 9600 baud. Maybe just in celebration of this beautiful music, I just want to do everything at a low baud rate. And then we will do a... Um... Is this be long? What should this be? Now that's for the circuit we're not going to use, probably. Where's the other one? I closed it. No, oh, this one. Yeah, it's just an energy value, right? It's a 10-bit number, so just int. And then let's just spew that out to serial. Like this. This one just took a turn. <laughs> Passive aggressive aim messages, of course. Yeah, never talk to one person at a time, life is really just dangerous. this thing there was this like this was the dumbest bug of all time there was this era i want to say like 2002 i want to say this was maybe an xp bug early on that there was some like inbuilt messaging alert system that i guess system administrators could use to just send an alert to all the users on the network but it was wide open and so there was a period where just anybody who wanted to could essentially just send messages to your computer is this ringing a bell pretty weird one Okay, did this work? Uh, where is the power? Okay, so this will drop below based on an amount of light. And if it gets dark, it gets dark. Okay, this is a reasonable circuit. This, I did not, this does not look great. Should I get something more macro? I feel like I need something more macro if we're gonna do stuff like this. Let's shine some bright light into it. If we shine my camera flash, for example, we should hit something like 1024. Yeah, that seems about right. Okay, this, this circuit is perfect. Oh, 
Oh, my screen looks amazing right now. We need, so the bevy's going. We got bubbles going. I'm popping stuff. The stream looks pretty good. <laughs> yeah. So the thing that's missing from the stream though is, uh, wait, I have an alert. Wait, what happened? Why is Twitch trying to tell me I have some kind of alert? Well, the thing that's missing is is the the video for the demo music. Because I'm sure it's awesome. Is there like a little pop-out mode? Mini player? Oh, that's just attached to the window. We can't pop that out. So I guess we just have to do theater mode and just do a tiny one. Entertainment in the future? Yeah! Actually, what was that game? The game that just came out by the Dropsy developer? That's all about like a fake, weird, vaporwave internet? I didn't try it, but I heard good things about it. What was... what? Tinder shoot? Space Outlaw. Did anybody try this? So I, I I have not played it. I think we should play this though. The you're like some sort of cyber sleuth, and you have to solve mysteries by navigating through some weird alternate version of the. Uh, Let's watch the trailer, actually, because I, I don't, probably don't even know enough to actually explain it. It's like an alternate history internet, sort of. The Discord link expired? Oh, thank you for letting me know. Okay, wait. Okay, stop. Everybody stop what you're doing. The link has expired. Everybody stop. Stop the animations. Stop all the fun. Stop every stop everything. We're gonna fix this. Look at that tote back there. Um I forgot how. How do I do it? I do it from here. Alert fix it. Yes, thank you. Okay, everybody hold everybody just chill. This is like an amber alert. How do I do this thing? Is it from server settings? I don't know how to do it. Okay, invites. This one says it expires never. Invite code is nothing. Okay, I'm gonna get rid of that one. How do I create an, okay, I just, oh, good heavens. Do I do it from the, uh, Ooh, Dreamweaver front page pro. I, I, uh, front page. I did spend some time in. Is the one on the Twitch channel lie? Well, I may have just revoked that one also. Oh no, Bitrage. I think uh, Backblaze just kicked on. Man, everything just fell apart. Everything in my life just fell to pieces. Okay, are we good? Everybody, it's good. Okay. Do I invite? Is the invite to a specific channel? Okay, this link never expires. Copy. Throw it in here. I love Backblaze, except you can only pause it for two hours and it continually ruins my stream. So that part I hate about it. Um, okay, now what do we have to do? We have to go like update that Discord link everywhere.
I pushed the wrong button. Could you hear me? Am I back? I'm sorry. I pushed the wrong button. I'm back. We're back. I'm back. My mistake. It was my, my mistake. I was fixing a thing and then I pushed the wrong button and here we are now. Hey, I got, a, I got some achievements. I got some new achievements. You could hear me? Okay, I didn't even know you could hear me on that. Okay, I'm back. Look, new achievements, incredible. 10 people talking at the same time and 50 viewers at the same time. Good job, everybody, we did it. Which I still don't understand because this says that I've had 25, 21 people talking at the same time, but we'll ignore that. Oh, you can't hear me on standby, right? And there's no music. This screen looks amazing. Okay, whew, okay, uh, yes. And then we also needed to fix the bot, right? Wait, okay, glitch. <clears throat> Thank you for the congratulations. Couldn't have done it without Draclan and the life is yours. And the raid today, tall tech, life in a wheelchair, living in a wheelchair. Um, how do we do this? I think those are just hard coded in the client at the moment, right? Yes, this is an even different link. I don't know where I got all these links. Okay. And now we probably need to reload this man. It's too quiet here. I'm so ready for this workshop. I truly am. Okay, hopefully that Discord link's short. Okay, everybody, crisis averted. Let's um, finish watching that video. I don't even know where it is now. We don't need any of this crap. We got nine follows from that raid. That's amazing. That was like 10% of the total follower count. Oh, the browser search will auto refresh? It, it will? That's cool. Well, that's true. Mortal Kombat 11 is out. Okay, sorry, trying to like, get up from under email. game bundle. Okay, what are we even doing? Workshop. Right. Photo pen. I don't know why I just want that. And we can just do a thing. Pen 13 is on for some reason. Is like a I think pen thirteen is always an LED pen, right? So we could I forgot what our levels were. What were they approximately? So, beyond a certain amount of darkness, so we'll say like if it's less than 150, less than 200, we'll turn on a light. What is this? Digital right LED pen. You want to set it to high, otherwise set it to low. Does all sound good? Am I even up, like, talking to the right Arduino? I don't even know anymore. 
Okay, so now that's going to make the LED pin happen. You can, oh man, you could abuse me. Okay, is that true? Are these secrets? If things are in brackets? Oh, that was weird. I just looked at the screen, and what as I looked at the screen, my own face floated over my face like I was wearing a mask of myself, and then it was like my ghost was leaving my body. Weird. It's pretty weird. I just had an out-of-body experience from life is yours is, uh... Overlay. Now I want to add some cool ASCII cool ASCII art to my to my thing. I don't really care that much. Um, <clears throat> I mean, I do care, but I'm not going to do it right now. Okay, so this will just make 1013 high, which right now there is internally a LED pin on the board, but to hook up our own LED, we would just stick an LED on with like a 200 ohm resistor, and then we're all good, right? as far as let's make a thing happen. So photo cell, easy peasy, right? So this is our photo cell example. Resistor, 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 resistor. Why does that look weird now? Um. <clears throat> I should probably link to the example circuit, right? That's too many steps. I mean, it's fine. It was fine. It was all fine. Let's just do this. <clears throat> I want to lean into that, Draclan. I'm, I'm like, I, uh, I was pretty. So, are we all familiar with like the vaporwave aesthetic, like vaporwave term? I was kind of rubbed the wrong way by it because it, from my perspective, came with a like feeling of sort of anti-skill like deliberately making bad things, but there's a certain kind of early tech nostalgia that was in the vaporwave aesthetic that I'm actually kind of into. And I sort of want to like tilt my stream a little bit towards these things from when I was a kid. I want beige electronics. I want ANSI art. I want crack screen demo music. Yeah, I guess, man, syntax highlighting, right? The latest. Look, that had a bouncing thing. What was this? Oh, that was the little bird again. Wait, come up, little bird. Dusty? I watched some of Dusty's streams. Um, okay. So, we have an example. Great. This is all becoming a mess. We should be... I hate the inconsistencies of the Windows file dialog. I wish it just looked the same. How do I find Dropbox from here? Because it's not normal quick access. So it's th by clicking desktop, I can see Dropbox? Cool. This is my friend Mackenzie. A little weird that I have a picture over there. She just had babies. Don't look at Mackenzie. She just had twin boys. <clears throat> um. Where are we? We're in like files, jobs, 2019, PNCA, workshops, invisible technology. Yeah, Windows Explorer is just kind of not great. Okay, so we want probably like a new folder for examples. And we will have... I 
I have so many photo cells, we should just make a million. What was the resistor that we used on this? I already forgot. What did we use? Is that 10k? That's brown. I don't know what resistor I used. It doesn't really matter. Life is yours told me that it doesn't matter and you should just always use the 10k on resistor, no matter what you're doing. That's what he told me, and he's an electrician, so... I have to trust him. Okay, we have a photoresistor demo, which at a bare minimum will just change the light, the, in, the onboard LED here. Great. So then we also want our CapSense example. So where was that? That's this, dude. I'm not loving this this uh this song as much. I must admit. And then we'll just put an arbitrary threshold in for this and Website to be stunning. No, I don't. I want you to shut your mouth. Okay, so you only you only deal with fifty volts to a thousand volts. Anything under that, you don't deal with. Not your not your problem. Got it. So, Life is Yours told me to put a thousand volts AC through my Arduino, and I'm going to trust him because he's an electrician. It seems like a lot, it seems potentially dangerous, but he's, uh, he's an electrician, so... Turn on LED pen. Oops. Some of these songs are awesome, some of them not so much. This one, I'm not feeling it quite as much. Okay, and then everything will be sure. say something like wait we were printing the time we were printing the wrong thing before cool well hopefully this still works So we are going to say, wow, that's a big number. That number seems like not okay with how big it is. Why does my serial... Input freak out? Why does the number get bigger every time I touch it? That seems like not good. Why would that be true? This goes above a million?
Let's just say above a thousand is on. Because even if I'm if I'm holding the wire, we're in the four hundreds. But if I hold the yeah, let's just say above a thousand, we will. So this should just say, if that level's above a thousand, we should see some light. All this stuff is going to work weird on my laptop, for sure. The chat is extremely purple. You were right about that. Let's go back here. What am I missing? <clears throat> Wait, I'm supposed to do what? I used to live in Austin for a while. I'm a computer boy. Excuse, is that is that what I am? Mm -hmm. Okay. What are you sending me? This is sketch, but it Pet Shop Boys. It's a sin. You're gonna get me in trouble with uh, content claims. I keep okay. What am I doing? The, yes, this thing. Do we upload this? I don't even know anymore. This is Webflow. Shut your Meet mouth. I don't care about Webflow. I'm hiding it. Nobody look at that app. At. Don't look at it. Um, okay, so can I do the thing now? We did this backwards, but it works. I mean, it doesn't work because it's the opposite. We want to say, you're, if the photo level is less, then turn it on. But we want this guy. We want to say, if it's greater than, turn it on. Okay, very simple example. And so for those of you that don't know, Arduinos already have or tend to on their pin 13, there's an LED on the board, and if you just write to pin 13, it'll turn them on that LED. But then you can also still use the pen if you want. But if you just need to do quick little testing, you don't feel like plugging in other hardware, it's a thing. What does Angel Fire even mean? I don't know. It sounds like a ski, a ski resort, right? Pretty good song. Not crazy about the, uh, the menu here. Yes, okay, yes, it's very similar. So the Pet Shop Boys wrote crack music? Is that what you were telling me? Oh no, I have to find that folder again? Workshops, little technology examples, photoresistor, capacitive sensing. Okay, two examples, and then our final friend will be the piezo, or like the vibration sensing. Gaston was trained by the Guardian. Yeah, man. 
Although, full evil, I feel like, like, Horizon... I don't know, man. Somebody, they need, like, some better artwork. I don't, Red Baron, I feel like you need to step it up a little bit. Wait a minute, you think they stole from the Pet Shop Boys? I don't think so, I think it's the other way around. Okay, and then the other thing is this. This is our piezo dude. What is this one? Oh, this is for the real touch board. But I kind of don't even want to use that one. I kind of want to just use our own. So the LED pin, we'll just do 13. And then we won't even bother with this threshold thing. And we will just say LED pen if the piezo is greater. And then we won't even do analog right. We won't even, it doesn't work very well either. Anyway, here. Um, and we don't care about the voltage. This is essentially the same as this. these circuits are closed. The capacitor sensor one is just more fancy because it's doing fancier stuff. Okay, and then this one is just going to say hen Pen zero for what did we do? Where's our piezo? Oh yeah, we needed to do this a different way. Where did its resistor go? Because this is the one where we want. How do I continually? Someone is stealing my one mega ohm resistors every time I turn my back. I look away for one second. And then I don't have a mega ohm resistor. Haven't I pulled out like three of them just on stream? Wait, I found it. I found it. Never mind. I'm, I apologize for accusing you all. The Apple, yeah. The Apple police are going to come to me and the, and the Pet Shop Boys police, apparently. Okay, so I'm just going to stick the. Uh, this one mega ohm resistor across because I don't have anything stronger. And then stick dude in here and make a cool little robot looking guy. He looks great. He's got a little hat on. And then all we should have to do is stick electricity in one hole. Let's make this one A1. And then I can just leave the other thing plugged in. Um, right? Just voltage in one hole and analog in the other? Is that true? That doesn't sound exactly right, but we're gonna do it. I kinda don't want to unplug this though, because it's already working. I'll do it on the other Arduino. Okay, other Arduino. Wants. You can be 5 volt, right? Right? Logic level on a uh, Uno is five volts. I hope that's true, because that's what I'm about to plug in. Okay, and then upload this to Uno. This is the one that was previously working, which is blowing. You've seen a picture of my desk. Look, hands full, handful of electronics. There's too many electronics in here. Sick of it. Done with this crap. Um, plotter. Uh, this doesn't look good. Hi, I'm Louise. I'm a third grade teacher. 
This looks like I did something wrong. This looks like I did something quite wrong. Oh, because that's A. I forgot. I changed it to A1. I did do something wrong. That was just noise. And I want to tell you the story. I don't want to hear your story. I want to hear sick demo tracks. So this is going to... I don't think I did this right. I feel like I've made a mistake. Um, oh man, where were we? I don't know where we were. knock oh okay well that's fine I mean it's it, it just could be ground instead that's right if this comes from ground then it's gonna go up okay so in this case we'll just say if it's above like what did we have eight Really, it's pretty sensitive. <laughs> well, if we can save it to about two. Wait, there's an alien transmission? What is it? What do the aliens have to say? The aliens want to change my light color. I don't blame them. Okay, so... Ah, oh, man, I interrupted it. I apologize. That's just like me, to interrupt aliens. Okay, so... We have a way to... What? What do we have? We have a way to... Um, know about sound, sort of. We know about vibrations. And we have a way to know about light. And we have a way to know about... This one seems broken. How did I break this? I thought this was working. to respond for some reason. Maybe the delay is too long. Or maybe the, the cap sense stuff is screwing it up. Okay, so, yes. What do we have? We have the things. Blobs for gifts? I didn't know the imager did anything with gifts. I thought they just, I thought they converted all gifts to gif of these now. To, to, to videos. I didn't think imager hosted gifts anymore. Um... Okay, let's try to navigate to this photo crap yet again. Where our, our Dropbox crap, I don't know what I just said. Sometimes words just come right out. Okay, files. Files, oh, let's see it. Workshops.
Vibration sensing. Okay. Well, yeah, but what are the blobs? Blob is just a way to have data without needing files. That's fine, right? In front of the blob. Probably just a base 64 encoded something. Isn't that usually all blob is? Okay. I wish I had one more Arduino. You can't download them? They don't want you to download them. Obviously. I need one more Arduino. Do I have any more Arduinos? I feel like I have a teensy in, in my pocket somewhere. But I don't want to do all this... ...teensy This song slaps. This is the one I've been waiting for. Okay, so here's the deal. Um, we talked about... I gotta turn this down a little bit, this music's too good. Okay, so we have, I believe, the foundations of our second dude, right? So we have paper, wood veneer, Vinyl as substrates. How do you spell substrate? Wait, ah, uh, ah. Uh. <laughs> Wait, when she want to talk about, like, is that not a thing? What a substrate. Oh, A T E. A T E. <laughs> There's lots of different materials. Okay, so this is all the circuitry parts. And then we want to know how to do stuff with these circuits. So, like, right now, again, we have the minimal thing of just, um... I'm so confused what's going on on the circuit right now. I think I've screwed it up. It seems very confused about what's going on. Anyway, um, this one works, and this one works. So... You could write a blob downloader. You could probably write like a little bookmarklet or something that would auto save blobs. Um, okay, so what are we gonna do? We're gonna talk about our simple circuits. We're gonna look at them in Arduino. We're gonna talk about the code. which I'll probably just throw those all up on a wiki, on the GitHub wiki. And... Yeah, we'll talk about all this stuff. So the thing that's kind of missing here is is the output we, the only output we have. You made something beautiful for me? What did you make? It's beautiful. This is just what I wanted. This is, now I can, now I feel like I can live in the, uh, in the, in this world. We'll make one of these for that uh, type, excuse me, typenetic stuff. David's examples are pretty silly. His already kind of does that, doesn't it? Maybe it's not this one. No, it just gets bigger and smaller. Maybe we haven't seen the icy one very much. I wonder why it doesn't come up as much randomly. Blah. I love my uh, my god rays on this. That was just a post-processing effect from 3JS. Quite simple. Oh, here's the icy one. I don't think this one was great. It was just okay. I'm 
This one's weird. A little over the top. A little over the top. Where's the static one? I did the static one, the space one, and the uh, comic one. There's definitely a way to pick these, and I just can't remember what it is. Randomness. Man, random really doesn't want to pick the index of the TV static one. Kind of impressive. Will we never see it? Now it's, now it's just... Now I'm committed to seeing this. I can't move on with my life until it happens. It's also noon. Are you serious? We're just never gonna see it. We got a weird random seed. There it is. This one isn't even that great. Anyway. Okay, whatever. Add more browser sources with the gifts. Is that what I need? Dancing across my face? I'm gonna have so many life is yours signature uh, browser sources today. What's the file size for that thing? It's not transparent. Where's the transparency? Why no transparency? I wish you could do additive blending of uh, sources automatically, but you can't, right? You gotta use the bubble. Oh, use it for the bubbles? Put it in, put that URL for the bubble. I see. Well, can't I just replace my head? Jacqueline, thanks for hanging out. I think I'm gonna wind down pretty soon, shortly. Uh, how do I do this? I just stick it in, um, in here? Well, this is just a nightmare. This is just a hellish nightmare. What is this nightmare you have to rot? Change the variables? I'm, t I'm doing serious work here. I can't be bothered to change variables. But the color, the color's the problem. I want no color. Transparency. Shouldn't have to key this. This is pretty legit now. I feel like now I'm officially in this in this demo scene world. It's not serious because it's hard to read. I want it bigger, bolder, brighter. Um, I love the animation though. What did you do the animation with? You did great. I'm proud of you. Thank you for doing that. I'm turning it off. Okay, so, okay, uh, what do we actually need to complete? So what tasks do I have? I think I need to pick up a few things. I was gonna get some pencils. Oh yeah, because we can use, um, graphite. I was gonna try to do some graphite. I don't know how this workshop's gonna go. We're gonna see. Um, it's gonna be a strange mix, and maybe not many people at all. So we'll just we'll just see how it goes. We'll talk about stuff. We'll go through those circuits, and then the thing is gonna be like, what do we do next, right? Like,
I wish I, I would kind of like to have a, um, thanks Ray, appreciate it. Uh, last week's was a little weird because half the class didn't show up, but hey. Um, I would sort of like to have a simple Unity example, but I have not done serial in Unity, let's see, in some time. And I wonder if there's just some easy way. So on the Unity side, I guess, I, I mean, I just need to watch the COM port and do the stuff. I just don't know exactly what that's going to be. Like, most of them have Macs. I will be on my Apple laptop. I just need some easy way to... Uh... Yeah, the OSX version, but that should be okay. Especially if I'm in, like, real fancy modern.net world. Because I can't, there was one young lady in the class who seemed interested. She's been doing VR stuff, and so I was talking to her about making some weird sensors for VR. Yeah, system serial into Unity. So I'm just spewing out numbers, right? Like nothing fancy. I just don't know if there's some, some contemporary, more contemporary version. Your super ugly code? If you just, I would like maybe some, if there's some simple foundation for it, like I really just want to read in. I feel like there should be like a five line version of this, right? Like there should be some really easy. I love that you used your own purple emote to uh, <laughs> punctuate that sentence. Very, very glad to see that. I feel like there should be like, right? Like a five line version of this. This doesn't seem like it should be complicated. stuff. Not just an easier version here. Not even easier, just more like concise. I don't need a lot of nonsense. This is just all people wanting help. I 
Okay, somebody who knows something? Yeah, this looks like an amount of code. Seems reasonable. Okay, let's do a quick Unity Unity example, maybe with the, uh, well, any of them, I guess, because they're all spewing out analog data. This song's pretty good, pretty into this one. I'm glad this person put a screenshot of their code. That's awesome. Very helpful. I guess in this sense, it's just gonna be like straight up, just type COM5. Or do we have to have some other fanciness to it? Yeah, just COM5, COM4, whatever, okay. Okie dokie. So let's do it with whichever, wherever our Arduino Uno port is, because I think a VR controller that you can blow on is pretty funny and weird. So that one was on COM7. Why is my Unity not in darker mode? Okay, so what do we need from our friend? System IO ports, is that all? Why is that not there? System.io.ports. Am I in the like. Am I in some subset or something? Have to restart for that? No? Okay, I think this is actually okay now. Can we start on me sharp? Does not really work? Okay, where's my dude? Here's my dude. Yeah, that's all I need to do. It seems so easy. Can I? You can do this up here, not in star. Really? It still thinks it's broken. What did I say we were on? Come seven? I'm gonna have to do like this reload thing. Really, you'd probably want to do this on another thread, but simple example. Is this really broken, or is it just Visual Studio being dumb? Visual Studio Code, rather.
It'd be weird thanks to my frame rate. Is this mad because the plotter is plotting? <laughs> that's com. Wait, that's com five. What are we doing? Anybody? Um, this guy. So this is com seven. Yeah. We got a bunch of zeros. Yeah, probably printing that is a bad idea. So they're just doing a GUI label. do that stuff. So I don't really have any idea if it's like actually breaking or if it's too slow or where our breakdown actually is. It seems like it's reading something. I guess I could just plug that into uh, high, like into 5 volts and it should just jump up to 1024. if it's actually getting data. Which it appears to not be. It's working. Wait, I just saw numbers. Now, I wonder if there's a way I can flush, because maybe I'm just like way behind. Um, or sending way too frequently. Like, you know, just basically read it and then throw everything away. Like flush. Like I kind of want to just read it and then throw away everything else because I only want to, I only like, I only care about values that I can get as frequently as I can get. You know, like so the frame rate of Unity versus the frame rate. What what is our? We're doing a delay here. No delay. So this is just going as fast as all heck. This might not work also. I wonder why 
that it's printing as two lines. It's pretty weird, huh? Presumably there's a way to say like stream dot like has bytes or something like, you know, to know. But Visual Studio Code is too stupid to know. Let's try closing Visual Studio Code and reopening it. Maybe it will magically know about serial ports. Now it knows about them. Great. Um, I don't know if it like has data, right? I mean, this kind of seems like, I mean, this is a very blunt version of this, but this kind of seems like all I want. So we could put this on um, like a uh, sphere instead. And then the sphere. to instance C sharp. Um, Just a two string, right? You dug it up? Thank you for doing that. Sorry if it took a minute. So, what did you do? Oh, you're being fancier than me. I should probably check this. That's fair. This is all very fancy. I will check for the open. Okay, I'll steal some things for that, but I want it to like stay kind of in the realm of like 20 lines of code. So we'll make sure it's open. We'll try to parse whatever we read from it. What? Can I not 
not have this? Where does int32 live? Just do int try first. This seems not bad at all. Where did you run? Everything seems broken there. Seems like that parse is not parsing. I think I just didn't do this correctly. The stream is open. Try to parse into value. I would have assumed that was the success. value and I'm going to try to parse that into that and then try parse am I doing this totally wrong it should return a bool right so if that's successful value I'm gonna print the real value. I'm just gonna print the word value. I don't know why. You hate what app? What app do you hate? My parse is broken? I should maybe I need to do this, like. And then we'll try to parse this into that. this no matter what. Maybe that's my problem. Maybe I wasn't getting past. I was never throwing, maybe there was like weird data at the beginning. Are you just not, just not happy anymore? Did I change anything else? I think I did. Our vibration sensor. That's you. We're pointing at you. Serial monitor. And we're getting data in there, right? It's COM7, 9600. We open it. Is this not returning true? Alert! Alert what? The read serial data? Yeah, but I don't want to do all that. Why don't I just read one line? That's too much trouble. If you do the read line, it like does the waiting for you. Although that maybe that's screwing me up. Could be that that's a problem. <laughs> this almost seems like Oh, well, I know the real problem is I didn't put the script on it. I forgot to put the script. I forgot to put the script on it. It's basically all there. Well, yeah, but I can do it in one line. Okay, I'm getting tiny amounts. That seemed like I was getting... this value. So now if I do
Is that true? You can have broken up and, and complicated. You know what? I, I that is a th I. So, in working on some of the teams I work on, I do find that there's often a ten tendency for people to like, and maybe because they enjoy it and they like the comp complex systems, but like I always want to write the least amount of code possible and keep things as simple as possible. Like, that is almost always my goal: is like keep it minimal. Um, yeah, uh, but I've seen that in programmers, like we're, we're just everyone, everyone in that realm in like the dev side of thing, a strong tendency to over engineer things. Okay. This is just ridiculous. Cause it's going to be some crazy value. So we want. I don't know why this isn't working. Is just zero too much? I can't remember how high our numbers were getting. But let's make it a float. A rolling average, yeah. But I'm. Sh this is this is stuff that's for people that don't really know how things work. So. Ooh. I'll just keep spitting in this thing. This is a bad example anyway. Why am I using this one and not the light sensor? Because the light sensor is way easier. Why am I? Why am I doing this? Why am I not just using the light sensor that's right there? I don't know why. Let's see that instead. This code was almost identical, actually. Oh no, I unplugged things. I forgot where anything went. We're reading from there. That's A0. This is ground. This is five volts. These numbers are going to be insane now. Um, we want to switch to this. And these numbers, we were fine with getting in a range to 1024. Sound is funny. Yeah, but it's not even really sound. Like it's just the the air blowing. Light is just one thing. Light, what sound is all the things? I the opposite of that is true. Light is part of the electromagnetic spectrum. Everything, everything is light. I mean everything is electromagnetic spectrum, except for sound. Sound's like the one exception. Sound's just like vibrating. Um why is COM7 locked? That's weird. Probably because I'm actually supposed to close that serial port. Oops. Sensor can't see any but visible lights. Yeah, but that's even that's a whole spectrum. And that it doesn't have to be true. I've got IR sensors. But this is it's not a this isn't really a mic. This is a piezo buzzer that I'm using backwards that is very not great and barely gets any if i was going to build a real circuit yeah if i could amplify this to something meaningful but this is very i get very little from this and if i was going to do that i would just use a real microphone yeah a real microphone sure but then why would i be using an arduino any of this stuff i have a real microphone right here i would just use this but even so that still doesn't that's still irrelevant like the electromagnetic spectrum is still infinitely broader. Like, electromagnetic spectrum is light and Wi-Fi and my microwave oven and everything. Everything, everything. Is this not the right port? 
Did I not do this correctly? I feel like we want to power this guy. We want to read from the middle, and we want that to go to ground. Maybe our numbers are just enormous. Enormous. Why does it keep thinking the port's busy? Probably because I'm not closing it when I should be. That's probably the real answer. I still think light wins. Light always wins. Also, this is not really a mic, again. Like, this is not... This is me trying to turn... So what are we doing here? So I'm getting values roughly 0, 10, 24. A quantum particle detector? Sure, no problem. I get too many zero reads. Like, some weirdness. We could just always make this lurping towards the size. Oops, excuse me, sorry for hitting the microphone. Also, I still don't understand why this is not working. We get the string value. I mean, we could just... Cheat. always lurp by 10% um, from where we are to where we want to be. So it's gonna be pulsy, quite pulsy. Something went wrong with our reads, but it's so efficient. Big thing, they'll get shy and hide. But like, if it gets more light from the screen. So confused about why we're getting these seemingly bad values. Maybe this is a lie. Maybe I can't really do this. Maybe this is bad. Like discard in the buffer. I should only do that when I successfully read or something. But I just don't do this. It gets too slow. I mean, it just gets too behind. 
No, I don't think that's the problem. I don't think it's noise. I think it's, um, I'm sending data too fast for Unity. So like if I waited like 16 milliseconds here or something like that, even more, like, uh, like only sent data every 100 milliseconds and then just continually lerped. Yeah, then it'll have a... It's still too much data though, which doesn't seem right. Seems like Unity should be popping that off more quickly. Like I'm ending up with just too much, you know, like too much buffer. And I want to... Um, I wish it was like a try read line. I actually don't understand. Like, this seems like it should be rare enough that it should be fine. Maybe did it not actually upload? My delay? I'm just not reading, you know, with the read line, I'm only reading whatever, X number of times a second. This is fine, but now it's killing my frame rate because my frame, it's like waiting for it. So there was that read timeout thing that we read about. That's not where that goes. So it won't, it won't wait for that. Oh, it's gonna raise an exception? Do try catch and then whatever, like try it. Do I have to have an exception? Oh, there was a trick here. It's not very tidy, but this should work. Whoa. Ooh. And we could send more frequently than that. That wasn't very frequent. Just so it's not like, I need 16 milliseconds. If we're running at 60 frames per second. Send it 60 frames per second. We run faster than that, so it should be okay. Maybe our lerping's too slow now. Maybe we don't even need to lerp anymore. Maybe we lerp 50% every time. I might, that whole thing might be unnecessary. Okay, this is adequate. I can hide the friend.
Um, I mean, I can just sleep it. I'm not doing any of the work, so I can just do delay. Like, I don't have to like manually track. If I was, if I wanted to do other work, I would do that. But for this, I don't think I, I don't think I have to worry about it. I can just like sleep the whole, tell the whole processor, chill. Oh, I could I could put it on the directional light, right? I could put it on a on the light itself. Sure, let's do it. Um, good idea. Okay, so let's do this, and then we will get we'll just get a reference to the light instead of this whole business. I like it. Good idea. And then we'll say all this stuff we'll just do like float, float, white. And we'll lerp from whatever light that intensity is. We don't want the scale anymore. To whatever the new value is. This is normalized value. Ah, scale value. That's normalized. And then. Song's out of control. Tricking me out a little bit. Well, right now I'm just going to do lighting intensity. So when it's dark, it's dark. And when it's light, I don't know why that's freaking out a little bit. Probably because I just have a bunch of resistors hanging out of the hole here. Um, now, as far as like doing that at a bigger level, I mean, really, we'd want to like just do a solid color here. Just make it easy for now. And then probably turn off ambient lighting altogether. Don't even do that. Oh, wait, I didn't mean to reset this. I meant to reset this. Ah, man. Definitely a little uh, sensitive when I jiggle it. Okay, so now by shining the light on I shine bright light here, it should be bright over there. Mm -hmm. 
don't know why I'm like dipping occasionally. I think I'm just getting bad values. I don't know if that's from my read or from my loose sensors. Like I I'm occasionally seem to be getting zeros. Let's look at the serial monitor on that, because that's pretty weird. Rotate the whole skybox. Um, well, you can actually set this, actually, now that I think about it, you can set the skybox intensity to come from a specific light, I think. I think. Um, there's not like a day-night cycle in the skybox like that, but there is a... Um, That is my sun source directional light. So I actually would have thought that would work. Maybe it's not set to real time. Is that my problem? Now if I dim this. I thought there was a way to do that. To have your sun Am I making that up? Like, have the skybox reflect the sun value? I think I have another program. Anyway, I'm not very worried about it. I made my simple example. Um, I do want to check one thing and see why... Uh, those values seem so bad. Like we occasionally just get something that seems way off. What's that big jump? But I don't have like drops to zero or anything. Like it's sensitive and noisy, but I don't have big drops to zero. So that seems like that's happening here. Like those random fuzzies. I'm gonna just not do the lurping for now because... Or maybe we just lurp a tiny amount. That'd be fine. In fact, we shouldn't be doing... Oh, we shouldn't be doing that in here. We should be doing it here where we have... Um, Like, kind of no matter what, we always want to be lurping towards our goal. Because if we're animating faster, then we're getting light. Okay, that's super broken. What's my deal? Whatever value is, is hopefully getting set. Dividing that here, we're always lurping towards that in update forever. I don't even need to do it inside stream. Oh, my on GUI is inside my update. How did I manage that? That's probably part of why it doesn't work very well. I don't, can't even believe it let me do that. Uh, what's my problem here? I'm always lurping from here to here. From where I am to where I want to be.
I messed something up. What'd I do? If you rotate the directional light. Oh yeah, you're right. You're right with rotating it, but the intensity didn't work. I thought the intensity would work. Also, how did I completely ruin this? Like, look at that. Every once in a while, I'll get like a one or a zero in there. In those values, there's pretty weird jumps that are happening. Like stream values coming through gross or something. Okay, what did I break? String value seemed okay. String value, we're trying to parse. We're always trying. I don't know, I've messed up my logic somehow. I'm not exactly sure. Okay, there we are. I still get occasional jumps to zero, and I don't understand where those are coming from. Like, I can see them there. Maybe I shouldn't do the read line thing, but it was so easy. Well, I mean, I potentially want that. Second camera, I know. I mean, there's nothing going on on the board. But the, the output seemed okay. Like that seemed not, like in the serial monitor seemed not problematic, but yes, I do need to get another camera. Um, but like looking in here, There's no like zero is happening. These number changes are happening because I'm changing the, I don't know why it jumped up to 1024. Is that because my resistor's loose? Oh, okay. Some of the things happen because my resistor's loose. These numbers seem not unreasonable. But I just get bad numbers all over the place here. I want to just like, and they do have a new line, so they're like read line. Is that timeout too low? I did see some people seemingly complaining about that. Okay. Something was going bad when I was failing. Shining bright light. Okay. Adequate, adequate example, I will say. What's the kitty doing? Wait, I've lost, I've covered up. What's the baby doing? Oh, the baby, devouring the world. No, I know, I know, I know I need a camera. I know. But I mean, there's not much to see here. There's like nothing going on down there. It's a resistor and a photocell hanging around that's all okay I feel pretty good I need to um, does the 
Intensity of the light in game reflect. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. That's what I've been doing. What are you talking about? It's dark. And then when I uncover my finger, if I hold it up to the bright screen. Alexa, turn off the lights. Alexa, turn on good night. Oh, the screen is still too bright. Alexa, turn on stream. The, I don't have enough directional light. Okay, let's try with these lights. Alexa, turn off right desk. Alexa, turn on right desk. Yeah, works okay. All right. Oh, like the exact same intensity? No. I don't think so. I mean, it was okay with this light. It seemed reasonable with this like hard light pointed straight at it. So Alexa, turn off left desk. Alexa, turn off right desk. Yeah, that works pretty well, right? Alexa, turn on right desk. Yeah. Cool. Um, you could do ambient light too, I guess. Okay, anyway, this is the start. We got the stuff. What else needs to happen before I do this workshop? I need to... Processing, Unity. Drag it across the monitor. I guess that would work. I think I have a color sensor somewhere. So that's a light area of the monitor. This is a gray area. Yeah, so I can drag it across the monitor. It's kind of cool, right? You could play around with it so much. Hey, I expect you to then, because a photo cell costs nothing. So do some photo cell, some weird Unity photo cell stuff. Hopefully the, uh, I'm, I'm hoping that, um, so there were only four students in the workshop last time. One was there as a TA and he's more interested in traditional fabrication. So hopefully he'll be interested in like some of the material based stuff. There's a student that was interested in some sound reactive stuff, like where he could play drums and make that happen. So that's what we're gonna do with the vibration sensor. And there was um, a student interested in VR stuff. So maybe she will be interested in this. And then there was a outside person who came who seems to know what he's doing. So we'll just see what he wants to do. So, um, Alexa, turn on the lights. Uh, Alexa, turn on stream. Alexa, turn on stream. She hates me. Alexa, turn on stream. If you sing to her, she listens. Okay, man, this is almost four hours. Okay, I gotta get my act together. So what do I actually have to do to prep for this? I need to gather supplies I need to buy paper what else do I need to buy multimeter I don't know if my multimeter is really sensitive enough to at least we can check continuity but I don't feel like my multimeter is gonna do I guess it could 
I don't know if I want to try to get into reading these values on the multimeter meter. But I guess if I did like 20 volts digital and tried to read what was coming in. Because all this stuff is going to be between 0 and 5 volts. Right? So on any of these that we wanted, we could kind of like introduce another thing and then read it over the multimedia meter. Is that true or false? Let me let me do that real fast. Alexa, what is the life is yours location? Alexa, stop. Alexa just tried to box me. How dare she. Okay, so let's try, yeah, so if this, I don't know if I have any alligator clips handy. The, um, so get this here, go back here. Some of this stuff is about resistance though, right? But this we're actually measuring voltage, which is fine. That's all we want, that's what we want. So serial monitor, this is going to be stupid right now, but if I plug it that way. So can I read this without screwing up the circuit? It's been a, kind of forgetting. Okay, so common, yes, yes. I bought new batteries for this because I may need it. Point thrower, point three. And that's point four, point three out of 20 volts. So it would really be times, um, four times whatever I'm reading. Point two. Trying to get some light, 0.7. Okay, so that at least works if we want to deal with that. But I think I'm only going to really talk about continuity with the multimeter, just because we're going to try like some, um, you know, maybe graphite circuits and stuff like that. She almost said, she was telling me like, my, she, I think she was telling me my distance from somewhere. I don't know, Alexis is out to get me. Okay, we got to get gather supplies. We got to buy paper and pencils. What else do we need to do? Code examples. Post notes. Post code examples. Email students. Laptop with processing. I think we're good. I think that's what it's going to be. Okay, I think it'll be fine. Well, maybe, hopefully more people show up this time. Maybe less people will. Maybe it'll just be me and like one person. Um, that would be okay too. Okay, well, man, we had a lot of follows. Thanks for everybody. Thanks for all the new follows. The living in a wheelchair raid was awesome. We got, man, Draclan gifted Ray a sub. What, a, just incredible. Just like now, wait, what's now? What happened now? I don't know what, what did I say? What did you say? What are we even talking about? Life is yours. Sometimes I feel like we're not on the same planet. Me and one other person. Oh yeah. No, look, we got, there's six people watching. It's not just you. Um, I think that's, I think that's going to do it. I think that's it. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for being patient as I stumbled through these things. I do want to get a camera and in the future do more hardware -y stuff and just be set up for it. I'm kind of into it. Life is yours. Thank you for the idea of the illumination thing in Unity. It's a simple thing, but it's pretty, pretty cool. Workshop is tonight at 6 p.m. So I got to do some stuff to get my, my ducks in a row. And I don't think I'll be streaming this one. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you everybody else who stopped by. Have a lovely day and I will see you soon or you'll see me soon. Beardless. Are you used to my lack of beard yet? After one stream? Does it feel weird? 
No, you're not? Okay, fine. That's fine. Okay, goodbye. Uh, I won't be back until I grow a beard. Bye.